Stand as long as you preach Jesus yes. crucified and resurrected. Yes. You all right with me. Yes. I was looking for a barber. Somebody told me about a guy who cut hair. And, you know, from that very first time, I sent him to the barber's doctor. All just like we knew each other for years. We've been with each other on some high times and even some low times. And like you said, we've always been there for one another. We may not talk every day, but if one of us needs the other one, we are always there. Amen. So I thank God for your pastor. Come on, give it up for your pastor. smile upon you. I will say that that theme of love from the time I walked into the building, the ushers was so gracious to me. It took me to the back and everyone who greeted me uh, has shown the love that the presiding, uh, the presider has talked about. So y'all just keep on loving folk. Amen. Just Amen. keep on loving folk. Well, I'm not going to be before you long. You know, if anybody knows anything about sports, you always know you have some free game stuff to do. So I understand that uh, Pastor Don brought me here as a pregame person 
Because you have a giant coming at four o'clock. Well, first is up, Reverend J. Vincent Terry. Say so I'm just here to stretch y'all out a little bit, make sure your blood is flowing. So when he gets here, yeah, you know what I mean. We can go up to higher heights. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. If everybody could turn with me to Philippians the third chapter, we're going to read the 13th and 14th verse. Philippians. Start that verse 13. And if it is your custom to stand, we ask that you please stand. And today I have the NIV version of the Bible. And it says these words, very familiar passage of scripture. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet have taken hold of it. One thing I do, getting that which is behind me and stretching towards the mark of the high call. I press towards the goal of the mark of the high call, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The word of God for the people of God may be seated. And if I could take as a topic today, it would simply be. God's fresh start initiative. God's fresh start initiative. Let us look to the Lord. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace to God. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's fresh start initiative. Sure, all of you have been riding down the road and heard one of these commercials concerning the IRS's Fresh Start Initiative. You hear stories and testimonies of everyday people who found themselves in tax trouble but have found a solution to a program called the Fresh Start Initiative. I, I, I believe that my favorite, I believe that this started in the midst of COVID because while you were already struggling and people could barely keep food on their table, families had to try to figure out how to fight the biggest collection agency in the United States of America. The Fresh Start Initiative is a, is a program where tax relief, uh, that you can get some tax relief upwards to $30,000. Well, my favorite one is about a man named Larry. Larry says, I owe the IRS over $30,000. They threatened to put a lien on my house. They threatened to garnish my wages. And they were going to freeze all my accounts. Jesus. But I called Optima Tax Release. <laughs> and it was easy as one, two, three. Okay. And now the threatening calls and letters have stopped. See, this program seems to be a good program of what you hear on the radio. But my question is, what do you do when you have more problems than just the IRS? Well. Uh, uh, many of us here, uh, uh, we have we have tuned in, but we understand that we have made some mistakes in our past, and, and we understand that we wish we could get some do-over. Do I have Do I have anybody in here today that can say that uh, 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 I wish I wouldn't have said what I said to somebody I love? I, I wish I would have done that thing to somebody that I really care about. I wish I wouldn't have gone to places that I've gone. I, I wish uh, I wouldn't have smoked or drank the things that I smoked or drank. I, I wish I wouldn't have made that bad financial decision, and I wish I could take that back. I wish I hadn't made that bad business decision, and I, I really wish I could take that back. And even I wish... I would have not done that thing or not done the thing to the church that could have helped the church move forward. These, these, these setbacks, these setbacks and failure caused us most, uh, all of us, heartache and pain and guilt and burdens to our very soul. Well, as we wait and we wait and we find ourselves praying and crying, we pray and cry and we cry and pray religiously for a divine opportunity to have a fresh start in which we have mishandled and took advantage of in the first time. Yeah. Our prayers and our tears and our petitions we offer up are, are an admission that we desperately need innovation, intervention from Christ to help strengthen and encourage and give us wisdom, power, and faith 
and joy to overcome the wrongs that we have done. Yeah. However, today I'm here to encourage you that, that though you may have made some bad decisions, maybe you have had some pain, some disappointment, but there is a bright side somewhere. And that is because God gives us a fresh start initiative. I declare that when God is present at the very hour of your pain, he will lift those things up. When you feel like you can't make it, God is just around the corner and God will step in just in the nick of time. Aren't you glad that God loves us so much that despite of our failures, despite of our mistakes, despite of our shortcomings, despite of our self-hatred, self God is still willing to look beyond our faults and still provide our every need. Can somebody say amen? amen. Today, today, today in the text, we find an example of a fresh start initiative. And, 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 and we find this, this person named Paul. Does anybody know about a man named Paul whose name started off as Saul? See, 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 see. Paul, Paul was a leading prosecutor of Christians. Paul played a part in the stoning of Stephen. Paul then had a Damascus Road experience. And, and Saul's name was changed to Paul. And, and then Paul went on missionary journeys. Paul started churches. Paul suffered great suffering. Paul was beaten. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was bitten by a poisonous Satan. Paul was thrown in prison on many occasions. But Paul understood as long as he had Christ on the inside that everything was going to be all right. Paul had some stuff going on in his life. But Paul understands that he had to forget the things that were behind him and face the race that's in front of him. Paul wrote this letter to the church of Philippi while he was in prison. Even while he was in prison, he was concerned about the church that he had started. And throughout the entire book of Philippians, he continued to say, rejoice, my brothers. And again, I say rejoice. So I want to let everybody know, no matter how dark it is, you have to rejoice in your situation and keep your eyes on the prize. Oh, I don't, I don't know much about the church. So but I can say to you today that today is your first initiative. You now have a new pastor so you can forget the good and the bad. You can forget what has happened down through the years. You can forget any church hurt that you've had to go through. And you can probably even join the song. I've had some good days and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when we look around and we think things over all of your good days, Outweigh your bad days, and I'm sure you won't complain. But I stop to let you know that you have a new pastor who is a true man of God. You have a pastor that's going to keep listening to hear the word of God. You have a pastor that's been through some up and some downs. You have a pastor that's willing to fight with you. You have a pastor that's willing to pray with you. You have a pastor that's willing to feed you the word of God. Don't get quiet on me, church. You have a pastor that's willing to help. You have a pastor that's willing to listen. You have a pastor that can preach with the best of them. You have a pastor that won't quit. I watched your pastor do the job and still go full time to show the people. So he can fulfill his calling. You have a pastor that will be your friend. You have a pastor that will bridge your wish. You have a pastor that will bring you through the hard times. You have a pastor that will work with him. He'll work with you. So why don't I say it to you all? Take advantage of your fresh start. Take advantage of your fresh start. Take advantage of your fresh start. Well, when, when you have your fresh start initiative, there's a couple things that you have to make sure that you do. First thing is you have to put a praise on it. Yeah. You have to learn that in every situation, no matter what the circumstances is, in the midst of the battle, you have to give God some praise. 
The psalmist says, uh, teaches us that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, another scripture says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All of you may serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with sin. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his woods with praise. Be faithful unto the Lord and bless his name. See, sometimes you got to praise your way through. When it seems like you're in a bad situation, you just got to drop your head down and say, Lord, I thank you. Yes, I may not be driving, but I want to drive. But Lord, I'm thanking you that I got a car that took me from point A to point B. Lord, I may not have the biggest house, but Lord, I'm thankful that I don't need to wait at night for the rain comes down. Lord, I may not have all the money in the church, but I'm thankful that every time I get my license, the light come on. Oh, I like to know that I want to be placed Baby. First thing that you gotta do, y'all, put praise on this day. Another thing that you have to do, keep your head up and open it up. When you're running a race of faith, you need to look to Jesus. Amen. Who is the author? And the finisher of your faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my wife ran track at Shaw University. So she sees me and my son at times running, and it tickles her because we don't have the best form. <laughs> at times, she tries to give us corners. And she tells us in order to win a race, First, you got to keep your head up when you're running. You can't, you can't look down at your feet and be running because you ain't going to be going where you need to go. So first, she tells us to keep your head up. And then she tells us to open up. She shows us this form where you got to open up while you're running. Well, what am I saying, y'all? While we run this race of faith, we have to keep our eyes, to look at our eyes until the hills from where come to our hill. That's when you got to look up, y'all. While you're running this way, just keep looking to the hills from where help coming to your help because your help comes from the Lord. You have to keep your head up in a position so that God and the Holy Spirit will help guide you, lead you throughout this race. And you have to open up your heart. So the Lord can come in and set with you so he can make a change in your life. It's not all about what you're going to do, but you have to allow the Lord to do what he wants you to do. Jesus knows all about our struggles. Yeah, the song said he forgot us yes. until the day is done. Yeah. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. Yeah. No, not one. Yeah. No, not one. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm not a long friendly guy. I've already went up two or three octaves. <laughs> but I got another, I got another point for you. And, and, and when you when you're doing this press start initiative, sometimes you're gonna have to wait on the Lord. Isaiah tells us, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The psalmist told us later on, he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So, y'all, you just got to sometimes just wait. We, we are in a generation where we think if we say a prayer right then, the Lord is obligated to answer right then. But one thing I can tell you, we can't rush God into a nothing. God is going to react in his time, but his time is always the right time. They say he may not come when you want him, but he'll always speak on time. Well, let me call on a couple of witnesses who who, who, who got a real life testimony on God's fresh start initiative? Well, 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 Paul, what, what do you have to say? Well, I tried my best. 
to kill as many Christians as I could. I did everything I was big enough to do, and I was the man, so I thought. But one day I got knocked off of my horse, and the hand of Jesus touched my life. Now I'm trying to help bring as many people to Christ that I can. Yeah, the journey isn't the easy one, but Jesus made me gave me a fresh start in initiative. So I just stopped by to let you know that now I will have my crown of righteousness waiting for me that Christ the righteous king will give me. Well, 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 if that's not a good one, let me talk to the woman who got caught in adultery. What does you have to say? Well, I was doing my thing and I got caught up. When I looked around at all the men that I just recently hooked up with, they now wanted to change the game and they were about to stone me. That's when I saw a man named Jesus. He came and kneeled down and wrote something in the dirt. He stood back up and said, he without sin, cast the first stone. All the brothers dropped their rocks and they left and Jesus told me to go on about my business and send no more. But before I left, I wanted to see what did he write in the sand and it looked like he said, you are a recipient of the fresh start of the message. Well, 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 there was the people on the cross and, and, and that thief would say something like this, well, I've done so much I don't even want to discuss it right now. But I say that I did deserve to die. They hung me on a cross and something uh, on the inside told me to look up. When I looked up, I noticed that this man had to have been the king of kings and the lord of lords. So all I can say is, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, it be to be you now are recipient of the fresh start initiative. And today you will be with me in paradise. Everybody in here today can say this. I done done some things. Yeah. I, I done said some things. Yeah. I've gone some places and I've made bad decisions. I, I found out that I was a cheater. I found out I was a liar. I found out I was a gambler. I found out I was a gossiper. I found out I was a whoremonger. I found out that I was a thief. Yeah, collectively, we have done some things, but God looked down and saw that we were all on our way to a burning hell. So he said, I need to start a fresh start initiative. So he sent his son down through 40 and two generations. He came and killed the blind. He fed the hungry. He raised the dead. But in order to give us a real fresh start initiative, he had to be offered up as a one perfect sacrifice. Well, they feed him all night long. They put a crown of horns on his head. They pierced him in his side. They nailed him to a cross. They hung him high and stretched him up. They tell him to keep him. The sun refused to shine. Uh, he hung his head uh, and he died. Uh, but that's not where the story is. Uh, they put him in a moral tomb. Uh, he went down and took the keys to come down in the grave. Uh, he went to the capitals. Uh, and on the third day, uh, come on, somebody in the church. So all I can tell everybody is forget those things that are behind you and press on, press on, press on, press on, press on, press on, to the Lord with a high thought. Well, the AMD went to end the sermon is with the hymn. They said, I heard the thunder sounding, uh, I've seen the lightning flashing, and I heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus bidding us to fight on because he promised, he promised, he promised.
There may be somebody who's standing in need of a fresh start. You've tried everything that you can try. Now I want to offer you Christ Jesus. Try the only one that can truly give you a fresh start. The world can be a scary place. But when you have Jesus on your side, you can walk boldly. You can go boldly anywhere that you need to go. Every day in this country, it's a mass shooting somewhere. Movie theaters, parks, churches, grocery stores. But if you have Christ in your life, he can either protect you when Satan sends his demons to you. Or right in the nick of time, he can show up and call you on back to glory. But if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you don't have that on of Satan. So if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, we bid you please come. Give one of the preachers your hand. Forgive God your heart. Is there one? Also, if there's anybody who would like to join this church, what better way to welcome a pastor? But she can go back home. If there's anybody who would like to join this church, I'm sure the pastor would love to greet you. And this time, please come. And if there's anybody who stands in need of special prayer, the altar is open. Someone said, just have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. There we go. If you come to him, is there one? Well, I guess as long as you got a phone in our hand.